so we got a little detour today. We went to use the winch on the front of my son's Jeep this weekend, and it had a really intermittent problem where it would wouldn't come on, and you could you we could mess with it a little bit, and it wouldn't work, and then it wouldn't. So I started out taking a look at it, trying to trying to test the different connections, and what I came up with actually was two things. One of them is that that red switch that you see here on the side of the the winch power box has kind of an intermittent, I guess, short in it. And then the other thing was, is the remote control battery was dead. So that wouldn't work either. So here I'm just trying to get the control box off the top of the, the winch. It's put in there with a bolt and a clamp right on top of that Smittybilt winch. And I'm beginning to think I probably should have mounted this control box over the side like this. But with time and patience, you can accomplish just about anything with a small Allen wrench and a, I think a 5 sixteenths open-ended wrench. I was able to get this, work this loose a quarter turn at a time. It's always fun to do that. I sped the recording up two times just so you didn't have to sit and watch the whole 45 minutes it took me to get this apart. Once you have the bolts out, the control box just lays over to the side like you see here. Take the line clamps that hold it down loose and it lays over there's four screws on the bottom that come out that allow you, give you access to the wires inside and my thought is why use a screwdriver when you have a power tool I don't know what we did before we came out they came out with the cordless screwdrivers but man these things make life so easy Once those four bolts are out, that cover lifts off and the switch stays in the cover. You can see all the wires there. You just have to figure out which ones are the important ones, the, the two that run to the switch. And what I'm doing here is I, I took the switch off. So I disconnected the wires and squeezed the little um, arms that hold that switch in. It's kind of a plastic held in just with plastic friction. That's all it is, real simple. And it pushes out the back side uh, to the outside of that cover. And there we have the switch. Now, so next I took it over to the, the bench here, and I'm going to just test it for continuity uh, using an ohm meter. So it has a, a positive and a ground, and put the, both ends of the ohm meter on either one of those terminals, and you should see open the switch or close the switch and you'll see the continuity between the two terminals where they actually make contacts and you can see the ohm meter goes to zero so it actually tested out at this point the switch tested out just fine I, every time I turned it on it, it closed the circuit and so I thought this, this switch was good now it turns out later that wasn't the case the switch still gave me problems after I went over and started checking the, the battery in the remote. This is probably the most frustrating part of the whole job. It was taking this remote apart. Number one, even figuring out the remote had a battery in it. I assumed that it it had a battery because it, it's a remote, but um, I thought it would have a rechargeable battery and it would charge up when it was plugged into the truck, to the winch, and it would charge the battery and let you use it. That turns out not to be the case, but when they designed this handheld remote, it, they did a really poor job of it. it. Number one, it's held together with four screws, and, and there are two different types of screws, two different lengths of screws. But the really bad part is it has a replaceable battery, uh, just like a, a flashlight, but it's very difficult. You have to take the remote apart, like you see me doing here, take the sides out, take the circuit board off, and you can see that the battery is built into the circuit board and it's sandwiched between two boards so it's very difficult you can't just pop it out you have to kind of spread the boards apart and then basically pry the battery out of its holder and then you have the the joy of putting it all back together once I got the battery out I took my voltage meter and just checked it to see if it was bad and it is it's down on voltage so it didn't it wasn't up to the task I needed to get new batteries but they are special batteries they're not double A batteries they're kind of unique I guess to this application 
So with the unique batteries that required a trip to the store, once I knew what I was looking for, they're A23s. Then comes the real fun part of trying to get the new battery back into the circuit boards without breaking any of the circuit board or the solders, which you can tell by watching me do this. It was not a simple task. It took trying to slide it in from the end, but kilt, uh, kicked off at an angle, and then getting the, the end that's kind of sticking out to, to pop down into the battery compartment. Really, really a bad design. And on top of that, this battery's probably been in this wrench controller for two years now. And so the battery does go dead. We haven't used the winch three or four times in that time frame, which means the battery will have to be replaced every couple of years to the lifetime of the Jeep. I guess the good news is the batteries come in a two pack and they built into the handle a storage location for the second battery. So they must have known this was coming. Finally got the battery in the controller circuit board and just tested it, turned it on, it's on, it actually works. So win-win, now we just put it all back together and go test it out on the winch. Getting this controller back together was a lot of, <laughs> really a tough thing to do because it has a circuit board and it's got wires and the two halves you have to get it all laid out inside there and then put the other half up against it without the wires getting pinched in between the, the plastic walls. Um, it's not the simplest thing in the world. And I fiddled with it for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So I've sped this clip up so you can kind of see it uh, all, but it, it did take me a little bit of fiddling to get it right so that it fit together good. And then you have to put the Get the screws back in it. It all works. There's longer screws up on the head because it's obviously thicker there and then there's the, the short smaller screws are on the handle itself. And there's the controller all put back together and operating properly. Remounting everything was just a simple process of snapping the switch back into the cover and then fitting the two wires back onto the switch, the, the hot wire and the common ground. So pop that switch back in. Again, it's just held in with some plastic fingers, friction mount. The two wires go on the back side and then I just laid the cover on there for now because I want to test to make sure that the winch actually works. What I did is I first hardwired the, the switch in and I'm trying to run it disconnecting the clutch on the winch so it's not going anywhere and I'm running it to see if it actually does does run. Now here I'm just pulling out a little bit of extra winch cable just to make sure if it engages it doesn't try to wind that winch up too tight, that cable up on there. I've had problems with, with it coming back too, too tight so don't like it being that way. It's success. You can see that the winch is actually rolling the cable in. It's actually working with the remote plugged in and then the next thing I want to do is I tested it unplugged with just the, the wireless remote to make sure that worked. And it actually did. So it was time to kind of button everything else down, put the screws back in, make sure everything is mounted up properly. Because at this point, I thought we had fixed the problem with the battery in the remote before I bolt everything up. So this was the second fail point. And through the magic of video, you get a 45 second remounting video instead of the, the 35, 40 minutes it actually took me to get all this to work. 
just like when I took it apart, getting all that up in there. It's, the mount is really hard. If I was if I was to redo it, I'd probably look at trying to mount that control box to the side over there. I think it'd make it simpler. But anyway, like I said, at this point, I basically thought I was done. But uh, that did not turn out to be the case because on, later on when I was trying to use it, a couple of days later, it stopped working again. Well, it turns out that the switch that they provide on this uh, winch is not waterproof. So anytime it gets wet, any moisture, like rain, humidity, river crossings, anything like that, anytime you get into that, the switch may or may not work. It's kind of a crapshoot. The good news is it's a really simple fix. All you have to do is find a waterproof switch. With the internet today, this is a really simple thing to do. Got online typed in waterproof 12 volt rocker switch and it popped up on Amazon. So all I had to do was $15 switch on Amazon that showed up at my door a few days later. All I had to do was pop the old switch out with the flat blade screwdriver and the wires pulled out with it, hooked it up, popped the new switch in and everything was good to go. And ta-da, after that everything worked perfectly has it failed again and it has a nice the light lights up that you know you left it turned on low control worked every time also notice that when you're looking at these videos the jeep headlights are pretty uh cloudy and smoky inside so they don't work good so the next project i've already got it ordered some some new headlights that came with fog lights some leds so i'm going to be putting those in the jeep to help us be able to see going down the road it's always an interesting day in the garage and for those of you that always wonder well why do you actually need a winch on the front of your Jeep yeah sometimes you get off in the woods and you get stuck this picture and this trip was the reason we bought a winch in the first place lesson learned winches are like insurance you buy them put them on there and you hope you never need them but thanks for watching and, and tuning in let me know if there's anything you think that uh, need a little more explanation on or anything you think I did wrong, man, I'm always open for other people's advice. Thanks a lot.